In case it wasn't obvious from the channel name, I love war games. I spend most of my time thinking about them or playing them, both for this channel or just for my own enjoyment. Recently, they've even overtaken role-playing games as my primary hobby. And as that's happened, a strange habit from role-playing has come with it. Whenever I see something interesting, I can't help but wonder, can I make that a war game? Most recently, I got to wondering that about Pokemon. There's a lot of deep strategic complexity to Pokemon, in both the building of a team and the reading of your opponent and how you execute your strategy. What there isn't really any of is the positional play that I love so much in games. So I'm going to see what happens when you bring Pokemon to the tabletop and add that element to it. Well, sort of. For a lot of situations like this, there isn't an existing game you can use, or if there is, you need to do a lot of house ruling to make it work. For Pokemon, however, there's already a number of fan-made role-playing games, and one in particular that I've played for several years. I won't name it since, you know, Nintendo and fan projects, but those of you familiar with them will probably recognize the mechanics. Using that game as a base, I got to work deciding on how I'd do this. Originally, I intended to make three trainers to a side, each with a team of three Pokemon. I pretty quickly realized building strategies for 18 Pokemon wasn't very fun, so I dropped it down to a 1v1 match between trainers, each with three Pokemon that are all out on the battlefield at once. The trainer will also be on the battlefield, and the objective is to knock out the trainer or clear out the entire team. Before I introduce the trainers, let me quickly define a little bit about the mechanics. The game is a d20 system, with to hit rolls being primarily influenced by the accuracy of the move. Most of them hit on twos, so it's fairly consistent, but hitting can be made higher with high defensive stats or high speed. Each Pokemon can know up to eight moves, with four of them from leveling up or egg moves, and four of them from TMs or tutoring. Instead of PP, moves have frequencies with which they can be used. These are at will, every other turn, battle, or center. For this game, battle and center are identical. They can only be used once. However, a PP up decreases the frequency by one step, meaning battle moves can be made more accessible, however center moves cannot. Pokemon also have a variety of movement stats to determine how they navigate the battlefield. For today's game, the only two that will matter are Overland and Sky, which detail how fast the Pokemon can run or how fast it can fly. The slowest Pokemon in the battle can only move 6 inches, while the fastest moves 16. Trainers, meanwhile, moved 5 inches normally, with some being able to go faster. Now, with all that out of the way, let's introduce our trainers and their teams. Today's battle is going to be between the Pokemon photographer, Madison Rose, and the flying type ace, Kitty Hawk. Both of them are level 25, and build their teams with 3 level 50 Pokemon, and 50,000 Pokedollars to spend between them and on any other supplies they might need. Art for both trainers was done by Zaletta, Links to their profile in the description, please do check them out, they're great. Starting with Madison, she is a researcher, photographer, and scientist. Her abilities revolve around three things, shifting the position of a Pokemon on the battlefield, saving money, and manipulating the accuracy of moves. As a researcher, she has access to the game plan ability, which allows her to shift her allies, including her own Pokemon, insane distances across the battlefield, enabling her to strike from unexpected angles. She can also give her Pokemon a huge accuracy bonus on a single move a few times throughout the battle, ensuring she'll hit when she needs it. Her photographer abilities allow her to teach each of her Pokemon up to three moves without paying for the TMs. With this, all of her Pokemon have been kitted out with four moves apiece. They also have an additional two evasion against all attacks. Typically, this is supposed to be for attacks Madison has pictures of, but for the sake of this game, I'm giving her access to pictures of every move. Finally, as a scientist, she can construct healing items and even PP ups for half price, which she has used to great effect on her team. Speaking of which, she is bringing Abigail, a Venusaur, Alessandra, an Arcanine, and Tara, a Raichu, to the battle. Abigail is built for defense and endurance. She's carrying a big root and uses Leech Seed, Giga Drain, and Sunny Day plus Synthesis to outlast her competition. While Sunny Day is up, she can also take advantage of it to use Solar Beam aggressively for some ranged damage. She's going to have a hard time against Kitty's flying team, but without any Pokemon swapping available, Leech Seed hitting an enemy will guarantee that it faints eventually. Alessandra, meanwhile, is specialized into pure speed and offense, with a massive special attack stat and Heat Wave, Flame Burst, 
Dragon Pulse and Swift for her offensive moves. She also has a double team, which, in this game, produces three fake copies of herself that can attack, greatly extending her offensive range without putting herself at risk. Tara has a similar strategy, bringing even more speed and a bit less special attack to the table. She also has double team and takes advantage of her speed with Electra Ball. Her primary offensive options are Thunderbolt and Thunder, but she also has Echoed Voice, which grows more powerful every turn it's used. Tyro's stat line was made before I settled on this matchup, which is why Echoed Voice is here, but it's a neat move, so I wanted to highlight it. Kitty Hawk, meanwhile, is an ace trainer, flying type ace, and air adept. She can bring out the best in her Pokemon, especially when they're flying type, and is also capable of using some flying type and electric type moves herself, or even flying around the battlefield at the expense of some of her own HP. She has a Torterra named Clip, a Pidgeot named Alexander, and a whole Lucha named Ignacio. Unlike Madison, Kitty has to pay for all of her TMs, so she picks up Fly, Double Team, Toxic, and Protect. She teaches all of them to both Alexander and Ignacio, and all but Fly to Clip. Speaking of which, as a Type Ace, Kitty is able to change the type of a few Pokemon. She's replaced Clip's Grass Typing with Flying, making him a Flying Ground Type Pokemon. Clip is built for physical damage and being enduring with a huge HP pool, though he also has a few points put into defense to improve his survivability. Much like Abigail, he has Leech Seed and Synthesis, but he also brings Razor Leaf and Earthquake to the fight. Earthquake is especially useful in this team, as none of Kitty's Pokemon can be hit by it, so he can use it much more aggressively. He carries a Leperberry, allowing him to reuse Leech Seed or Synthesis. Alexander and Ignacio both follow the general plan of Alessandra and Tara, both built for speed and offense, so they bring attack instead of special attack as their main stat. Alexander knows Roost, Tailwind, Quick Attack, and Brave Bird, and carries Bright Powder, which further improves his evasion. Ignacio, meanwhile, knows Detect, Hone Claws, Aerial Ace, and Flying Press, and carries a Lucky Punch to improve his critical hit range. As you can see, both teams are built around similar strategies. This wasn't intentional, they were originally supposed to be allies when I built them, but I think putting them into a fight they weren't expecting will make for a much more interesting battle. So with all that said, I'm gonna go whip up a battlefield and play out the game, and we'll see how things go. The battlefield is a very artificial setup, built more for gameplay than any form of realism. It has two symmetrical rivers on either side, creating barriers against the Pokemon who can't swim, and a pair of hills and forests in the center. The hills block line of sight across them, while the forests are both difficult ground and line of sight blocking, preventing Pokemon inside them from making ranged attacks or being targeted by them. Unlike most war games, the order of action in a turn is determined by stats, starting with all trainers and then moving into Pokemon. The turn order in this game goes Madison, Kitty, Tara, Ignacio, Alexander, Alessandra, Abigail, and Clip. Madison begins the game by activating Game Plan Plus. This is an ability she can only use 4 times in this battle, and it lets her move all of her Pokemon up to 19 inches. Alessandra and Tara both move out to the flanks, while Abigail takes shelter in the central forest. Madison, meanwhile, follows up with a 5 inch move of her own. Kitty spends 2 HP to fly forward, moving 12 inches instead of the usual 9 inches she can move thanks to her high physical stats. Ignacio and Alexander both follow her on their turns, with Ignacio using Home Claws to increase his damage output in coming turns. Alexander, meanwhile, holds his action as Alessandra is clearly in range to pose a threat. This proves to be the correct choice, as Alessandra runs between Kitty and Alexander and uses Heat Wave. This deals almost half of Kitty's health and damage, and would have knocked out Alexander if not for him using Protect this turn. The rest of Madison's Pokemon move forward and use their utility moves, Tara activating Double Team behind a hill, while Abigail emerges from the forest and sets up Sunny Day. Clip follows suit, using Double Team and moving the very slow 6 inches forward with each of his clones to spread out across the battlefield. The next turn begins with Madison immediately using the weaker form of game plan, which can be used 5 times in this battle, to pull Alessandra away from danger. 
Kitty Hawk gives chase and uses Air Slash, but she misses due to the evasion bonuses Madison gives. Tara, meanwhile, moves her double team clones forward and uses Echo of Choice on one of the clips. This removes the clone and deals a single point of damage to Clip. Ignacio joins in with the double team antics, spreading his clones across the battlefield, while Alexander swoops in to finish what Kitty started. He's almost exactly 14 inches away, his maximum move distance, and he connects with Alessandra using Brave Bird. He rolls a 20 and scores a critical hit, sending Alessandra flying and knocking her out. This crit isn't actually a good thing, as Alessandra would have fainted without it, but the recoil on Brave Bird is made all the worse for the high roll. Abigail's previous setup of Sunny Day comes into play now, as she moves into a perfect position to line up a shot against both Kitty and Alexander. Madison uses one of her four applications of strategic targeting to ensure that it hits, and Alexander is knocked out, while Kitty is brought dangerously close to being out. One more good hit on her could end this entire game already. Clip moves forward with his clones and tries to hit a Tara clone with Razor Leaf, but misses. Tara does the same, moving her clones forward and failing to hit one of the Ignacio clones. This clone immediately strikes back with Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace in this system can hit multiple targets, and he uses it to clear out both clones. While this is going on, both trainers are pushing themselves towards danger. Madison rushes forward to try and use one of her revives on Alessandra while Kitty flies closer and spends some of her precious remaining HP on Air Slash. She hits Abigail and rolls high enough to flinch her. With Tara busy on the far side of the battlefield and Alessandra out of the fight, this proves to be the thing that saves Kitty. Madison keeps trying to reach Alessandra but can't quite make it this turn. Kitty again uses Air Slash and flies away, pushing her down to just 5 HP remaining. It's enough to knock Abigail out, and she seems to be safe for the moment. This is immediately proven wrong in the next turn, as Tara's one remaining clone had been placed in the forest. It now emerges and attempts to use Thunder. In sunny weather, this move has a 50-50 chance of hitting. Madison uses strategic targeting again, turning it into a 95% chance. Tara rolls a 1 and misses. Both Ignacio and Clip move into position to defend Kitty. Clip hitting Tara's remaining clone with Razor Leaf and removing the threat. With all of the clones closing in and Madison down to one Pokemon, it looks as if Kitty has completely reversed her fortunes and now Madison is on the back foot. This is made all the worse by her drinking her sparkling lemonade, healing 60 HP. Madison runs forward and uses a revive on Alessandra, putting her back into the fight with just 20 HP remaining. This isn't going to be enough, as Ignacio moves before Alessandra and there are two clones closing in. It's at this point that I noticed I'd given Tara Discharge. A quick check on what it did revealed it was also an AoE move. She runs between the two oncoming clones and uses it. This knocks out both of the clones, single-handedly saving the game for Madison. Ignacio moves his one remaining clone closer, as well as flying across the river himself to give chase to Madison and put the pressure on. Alessandra responds by moving between both Ignacio and Clip and using Dragon Pulse. If the original Pokemon is hit by a move during Double Team, all the clones disappear. Alessandra rolls a hit, but both Clip and Ignacio use Protect, keeping their clones in play. Clip continues moving his clones forward, one of them looping around behind the forest to come up behind Madison. Madison falls back from Ignacio into range of Clip's clone and uses Game Plan Plus to pull both Alessandra and Tara back towards her. Tara moves close to the Clip clone and tries to use Echoed Voice to remove it, but fails. The Ignacio clones close in and once again Madison is threatened with being overwhelmed. Alessandra moves between Ignacio and his clone and uses Heat Wave in a desperate bid to take him out. Unfortunately, his speed and evasion bonus from Double Team are just enough to ensure that she misses. Clip's clone moves forward and hits Madison with a Razor Leaf, dealing 83 damage, knocking her down to half health. At this point, it looks very likely that Madison is going to be overwhelmed in the coming turn. Madison uses a Hyper Potion on Alessandra, healing her for 43 HP. 
Behind her, Tara runs up and hits Ignacio with a thunderbolt. He is forced to use Detect to avoid dying to it, which prevents him using any other move this turn. He closes in on Madison again, but can't properly threaten her. Alessandro, meanwhile, rushes over to Clip and hits him with a flame burst. Madison uses strategic targeting to ensure this move hits, and it rolls a 20. The critical hit takes out half of Clip's HP and destroys the clones. Without his ability to threaten Madison, Clip uses Earthquake, but only rolls a 5, which misses Alessandra. Madison dives away from Ignacio, turning to take a photo as she does. This lets her use Foresight and confirms this is the real Ignacio. She uses her last instance of strategic targeting on Tara's Thunder. With Sunny Day over for a few turns, it has a much higher chance of hitting and it knocks out Ignacio in a single go. Alessandra moves around Clip to threaten Kitty in the coming turns if need be and uses Heat Wave. This one knocks Clip out, winning the game for Madison. Alright, so before I talk about how the game actually felt to play, if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Setting up this game was way more work than any other war game I do, so I might not make another video like this unless it does well, and those are the metrics that will tell me I should make more. This game was a lot of fun. It legitimately went way better than I thought it would, and I'd love to play it again. When I'm preparing for games and videos like these, I usually spend a day or two beforehand thinking about the game, the strategies I want to use in the first two turns, and speculating about how it would go. With how far forward Alessandra got on the first turn, I was worried she'd get into a position to wipe the whole team in the first two turns. Instead, we ended up with an intense back and forth battle where both sides were inches from defeat at one point or another. As I was writing the script, I suddenly found myself asking why I targeted Madison with Clip instead of hitting Tara. I think if I had taken Tara out instead, then Ignacio would have had the first strike on Alessandra and Kitty would have won. That said, the fact that a single mistake like that meant the difference in the battle shows that it really was quite close. I did also forget several things, including to use abilities, but I think the conclusion to draw there is that using abilities isn't a good idea for this effort. There was already so much to keep track of that abilities would have taken away from the fun rather than adding to it, I think. If I play this again, there are a few changes I'd make. For one, I'd try dropping the levels down to 25 for Pokemon and 10 for trainers. It would make the game easier to prepare for and keep defensive stats more relevant, as the sheer numbers bloat that can happen at higher levels would be less pronounced. Alternately, I want to play around with a proper squad-based game, using groups of low-level trainers and Pokemon as units, while the more powerful ones can act like characters. There's a lot of room for experimentation here, and I strongly encourage anyone who thought this was cool to try it out for themselves. And if you enjoyed the gameplay section of this video, or just find the idea of war games neat but haven't had a chance to check them out, you might enjoy the other battle reports on my channel, as they're all very similar and designed to be watchable even if you don't understand the mechanics. Plus, each one tells its own little story in a way that I couldn't do in this video with the experimental nature of the game, so go check them out. I threw my favourite one into the end card, which is definitely where you should start.